I'm Bob Holmes. I rep for Prosico. Um, uh, I rep for several people, but among them being Prosico. So we're uh, really involved in uh, graffiti removers and maintaining buildings. So uh, we've been trying to get something like this for years. So I'm glad we finally got to this. I've got my friend Nick Volker and his company assisting us with their hot water machine to kind of let y'all see that the equipment makes a lot of difference. So what we're gonna do, cause we're kind of fighting the night here, is I came, let me tell you what I've done. I came out this morning about nine o'clock and I applied a, a, a paint remover. It's an alkali based paste, real thick. So what you don't want to do is, is spray some solvent aerosol or something on your graffiti cause you're actually melting it and it's soaking into the brick. So we like to use the paste because then it'll break the binder. The binder is what holds the pigment together. So we're trying to break the binder on the graffiti, uh, but not allow the pigment to soak into the brick any further. So, so I put this on this morning. I covered it with plastic. It works better covered with plastic, but also it keeps people out of it because if you get into it, uh, it doesn't immediately burn you, but it, it will eventually burn you because it's an alkali based. So normally it's an apply it, cover it up. You can leave it on overnight. You can leave it on up to 24 hours and it just slowly eats through the paint, but it holds it. After we rinse it off, I'll have to neutralize it with the neutralizing agent, which I've got pre-prepared right here. And then we'll give it a final rinse. Uh, after we do that, we're going to move down here to this little small spot. This is the experiment that we're doing for the Vucare on the coating. And then I'll apply a different stripper five minutes and rinse it down. And so this is not an exact science, y'all. So this is a bit of a leap of faith. So I hope that, you know, don't judge me on how good of a contractor I am because I'm not a contractor. But I hope that I can, I can, it, it's more to explain to you what we're trying to do by breaking the binder and keeping the paint from soaking in deep. And then by using that method, being able to reduce the pressure that you're using to remove the graffiti because the pressure is defacing the wall. So, you know, we're trying to save the wall as much as, as much pain as we can. So, so far so good, we got a plan. We got a plan. Okay, here we go. Now, I took the coating and I didn't do the whole square. I just followed the graffiti. Uh, and as long as you don't get heavy on the pressure, that's fine. Uh, and that makes it go a lot faster. Uh, the plastic protects it, but also it helps cook the, the stripper. It helps keep the gases and everything in there. So it's kind of like baking it. So the plastic's a really good idea. Uh, no special plastic. I got it from the coffee shop and plastic bag and I cut it in pieces so you don't have to have a special plastic. Fire it up. We're going to do a cold water and we're going to do a hot water side by side. One thing I will say if, if, if you know if you don't have a gauge on your machine, how's that feel? Uh, if, if, you know, I usually, I'll, I'll, if you can put your hand in it at about a foot, foot and a half away, uh, that's kind of a shade tree way of checking your pressure.
Now, now hopefully I've broke a lot of the binder down into paint and now we're gonna put an afterwash on it to hopefully blow it out some more out of the brick without increasing the pressure. A minute or two is a long time when you're standing in front of a wall waiting, so I, I don't want to rush it. Now, w when I get through with this, we'll switch it to hot water. We'll keep the pressure the same, and we'll do everything the same, and then after it dries, y'all can come back by and visit it and see what it looks like. All right, switch it to hot. I'm having a hard time seeing where I stopped and I start, so I'm going to overlap a little bit, I'm sure. So, so we're at 150 degrees wa hot water. Did y'all see how the red released? So all these paints release differently. Uh, you never know. Reds seem like they come off a little bit better. Blacks are always pretty, pretty tenacious. Uh, I don't know if it's the quality of the paint or just the pigment, but black is usually rough. So. Now we're going to rinse that one down, and then we're going to apply a, another one there and we might as well go ahead while the machine's on and knock it out and we'll see the difference in this versus that. So this is a this is a 40 degree tip. That's a 40 degree fan tip. So it's got a wide a wide spray, and that's better for your brick. 25 would be about like this, and that's a little more direct hit on your brick. Do not use a tin or a pencil, a, a needle, a needle point we call them, because that's a it'll cut into the masonry. So the wider the better. Uh, these rotary tips that you hear, they sound like a bumblebee. Those rip and tear, so we don't like those either. So usually a 25 or 40 degree tip. 
and uh, you see our sample down there you see how the brick are dry around the paint that's where that's where the coatings at right here okay so this is a product called graffiti remover it's a milder much milder product it's a liquid so you can spray it we're, we're going to hope that it works over the coating uh, if, if i wouldn't use this on a a wall like that because it's not strong enough but we're trying to minimize the strength of the chemical and make it a lot faster to get off with the coating so take the plastic off the cover on the brush <laughs> it makes the brush work a lot better I feel like I'm in a space suit for I got these glasses on, so I don't know why I feel. Nick, let's do half in hot and half in cold. Let's keep it, I'll do hot first. So we, we have to let that set for five minutes. Anybody got any questions? Do we need to kill the machine? Let's kill the machine and let's go over it one more time and then we can crank it one more time. So, so so as y'all see, when 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 I hit that red, red just started going everywhere. So it's it's releasing faster. Uh, it could have been on not as long. Maybe they sprayed it thicker. I mean, we we don't know. Uh, we really won't be able to tell until tomorrow. But being on my end of the wand, it seemed like I was gaining more ground down here faster. Uh, we definitely gained ground by putting on the afterwash behind it because that tells me that we did break the binder down. Uh, some of these areas, like right in here, it's just a thicker spray. So you might have to reapply a little here uh, to, and let it go through it again. Or you might just add another shot of the afterwash uh, and that might get it off, just doing another afterwash. Now the afterwash is a product called Safe Restorer, and it's in your the books that I gave out on. It's on like page seven or something, but, but we're using that as an afterwash. Uh, the product that we went on first is Heavy Duty Paint Stripper. Sounds really, really bad, but it's just an alkali paint stripper. So it's not real fast acting, which we really don't want. We want it to just keep eating through the paint to break down the binder. Uh, the, you can afterwash it with any kind of acid to neutralize it because it's an alkali, but that Safe Restore has got a little something else in it to blow that pigment out of the paint, I mean out of the pores of the brick. So. So once you break the binder down in it, well, then you've just got the pigment particles. It'd be kind of like if you threw, you know, a, a bucket of chalk line powder on the wall and it would just, you know, soak into the wall. Uh, this, this product here that's under this graffiti is in there and it's called Block Guard Graffiti Control. This is the one that they're going to evaluate. It's a silicone-based, breathable water repellent. So it's non-sacrificial. So if you, if you strip the paint off with this or multiple other ones, it's not going to remove it. You don't have to reapply it. So we call that a non-sacrificial graffiti coating. Uh, it's a great water repellent along with a graffiti coating. Its primary use is a water repellent on porous surfaces 
It just happens to be made of silicone, which makes it a graffiti coating as well, because nothing sticks to silicone very well. So, uh, the, so that's the. It's got a per, you know, perm rating. The historical people here. It's not trapping moisture in the wall. It's got a perm rating in the high 80s. Uh, so it allows your wall to breathe, but it doesn't let liquid water go through it. It's kind of like a Gore-Tex. You know, it's, it's, it's breathable, but it stops liquid water. Okay. We still got hot water? Or do we need to... Okay, let's, let's go ahead and fire it up and see how this works, and then we'll kill it, and then we can uh, have a cocktail. How about that? <clears throat> Okay. Wet. It'll get hot in a minute. Just stand there. Quite a difference on that, but you're using a weaker product, so it's a weaker product, so the hot water helped it a lot more than this one. And plus, we had a five minute dwell time, we had an eight hour dwell time, so. I believe that's it. Now, now we could go to a stronger stripper on this and, and probably remove it, but we don't want to, we don't have the time to, you know, to let it sit 30, 45 minutes. So, uh, So what do y'all think? Anybody got any questions? I mean, do you understand what we're trying to do is break it down, not blow it off. You break it down first. And and there's 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 really multiple strippers. I just picked some that I thought would be the easiest to show. Uh, there's no exact science on it. You're always gonna be surprised. Uh, the quicker you get on it, the better. Uh, but you should should be able to get it off no matter cuz i mean how long is how long has this been on here a while i'm assuming and 
it's so if if you let's say you got off 90 percent of it and if you wanted to go at it one more time it's just going to keep pulling it off uh, and then uh, the point is we're not blowing the mortar up you know we're we're low pressure we're probably half the pressure of what you would be with a a, a, a small because they go they go up to 1500 pounds we were at about 800 so you're going to know your building so you can set your pressure but if you can increase the pressure a little bit you're going to increase the performance but we're trying to minimize the pressure so we don't blow out our joints and we don't blow the face of the brick off so brooke is there anything you would like to add no does anyone have any questions for bob you can read yes i'm wondering uh if it's not paid, but I have a problem with people looking for me putting these stickers on uh, like the gutters and columns and stuff. Is there any advice? The, the, the adhesive off of those stickers needs to be melted. Uh, so there's so there's some more products that that are a solvent based products and you can wipe them off. You've seen products at the box stores, you know, uh, they work. I can't think of the name of them, but these are stronger than those. Uh, so we do have products like that, and we can get you samples. It's, it's called asphalt and tar remover, but they're to melt things down like adhesives. Because you wouldn't want to go after something like that with one of these, because you'd probably strip the paint off of the gutter. So it depends on what it's on, which brings up if they're spray painting something that's painted, we can't take the graffiti off without taking the paint off of the building. You know, so if you have painted properties, most people just paint over it. Uh, so you you know you you can't train your paint stripper to stop; it's just going to keep going. So for 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 and and for plastics and and uh, there are wax-based coatings that you can put on to protect against graffiti on like columns, painted columns, but uh, they're they're not they're not very they're 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 iffy to say the least so the protective that you sprayed on the wall yes how long does that last if you were to hit it with graffiti remover a bunch of times you would eventually start to wear through it but just as it's as it sets uh as a water repellent it'll last for 10 years uh we're hoping that in a graffiti protection deal, if you're using a mild, a mild stripper like that with low pressure, you, you know, you're going to get five to seven years out of it. It will eventually break down, but it's a silicone. It's really tough. And something that actually determines the lifetime of the product. Yeah, if it soaks in deeper and, and, I, and how much you put on it too, you probably could figure about 75 to 100 square foot to the gallon on the coating uh, when you're applying it. Uh, it's, it's just not something that you can say, this is exactly how you do it every time, don't change because that ain't going to work. You're going to have to get familiar with your, your, your building is going to strip different than his building and maybe a different kind of brick. Your mortar may be softer. His, you, know, you, you just got to... But the whole point of this is to try to explain the science and you're trying to break it down and reduce the amount of pressure that you're having to use because the pressure is blowing is doing more damage to your wall than the chemical. So in, in regards to the chemical and the permeability, one application, two applications. Usually when you're putting on the coating, uh it's you, you start at the bottom and you go up you get a four inch run down underneath your, your little pump up sprayer like that little sprayer there and then you you come back down and as it as it soaks in you do it again it's yeah we call that wet on wet and what we're doing is we're trying to drive the second coat in on top of the first coat if you just go to the point of rejection it's just going to go so far it's going to kick it out this way you're going in you're letting it soak and then you're putting more on it. It's kind of like a two hour rain versus a one hour rain. You know, you're going to do that one application. Yeah, you're just getting bits wet in. So the first coat wet in yeah. the surface. So that coverage rate is those is those two. And if you're doing a water repellent that's a water carry, um, you would pre-wet pre the surface to break that tension. 
which would open up the forest to drive the sealer deep inside since most of them are penetrated, not film foaming, where these are film foaming tips. You gotta break the natural tension of the brick to allow that that clear repellent to stick inward so you get a good heat. So yeah, that but that recovery rate is based on so the first one may go on it because it's a it's a hot, dry surface, it may go on at fifty. The second one will probably go on at hundred. Because it's just would it ever be necessary to then come back with a second pass, or you would just do that? No, most of the time, two will do it. For I mean, water you, for water repellents, if you've got extremely tough graffiti climate, you might want to put a third coat on for good luck, just to build it up more. Is that that is buildable, right? You can build mills with that coat if you really want. Yeah, to. you could, but you want to. We don't want to because when you build mills, you lower perm rating. Yep, that, that was the point. Yeah, yeah. So so. That's a that's the standard product, wet on wet application. I did nothing different on that. I actually brushed that on because I didn't want to get out here with the sprayer. And uh, so there was nothing different about that one. If I'd have put a third coat on it, it would probably work a little better. Uh, but it is, you notice I hit it with all that pressure and it's still dry. You know, the, water's, the, the water didn't make it all the way through it. That's because it's blowing everything off, so. But you can for sure go to a little stronger stripper. Uh, we did it at the with the Vucre. We went we went with a little stronger stripper over this, and we took everything off. But it, we had to have an hour dwell time, and that didn't fit in with our twilight with our twilight workshop. Uh, so I that's why I use this one. But I think this one would be fine most of the time, and with hot water. So you see that. Equipment makes a difference. Y'all can't get graffiti off with a water hose, a can of aerosol graffiti wipe, and a stiff brush. All you're going to do is break it down, smear it around, and it's just going to suck back in. And the, it, there's a Preservation Brief 38. Yes, if y'all want to look it up, there's a Preservation Brief 38, and it's 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 a little old, right, Brooke? It's 1995, but it still applies. And, and it's, you know, I got one right here in my pocket. No, she's got some. And it, it'll talk to you about, uh, about the aerosols and how they thin it. So everything that we're talking about here, you can find something about it in the preservation, the preservation brief. It even talks about silicone-based coatings. It talks about the different kinds of strippers. So we're we're following the preservation brief so we're not going off the reservation here with these recommendations we just wanted to finally show people that there's another way to do it and haste is not the way to do it so everything good brooke we're good thank you all for coming We'll get this up on YouTube as soon as we can. If you have questions, please email me at info at vccfoundation.org. I can put you in contact with Bob or get you digital version of the preservation briefs and a list of products. Prosico.com is the website with the products, the data sheets, there's resources, there's videos. So prosico.com. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Volker here is one of them. Now, did you you did say that they were going to evaluate that and let everybody know? Yes, uh, six months to one year is usually what it takes to fully see what it does with the historic materials and make an educated decision on whether or not this product is right for the Victoria Historic Site. Question? Yes. Um, that protection is that advisable for interior brick wall as well as a, a, a version of that product is being made right now and for sale. It's called Masonry Dust Proofer. It's a silicone based, water based product and it's made to stop the dusting on the interior walls. And we've tested it several places. We're getting good feedback. We've actually had some people buy some here and put some up. I haven't chased it down, but it's a silicone based masonry dust proofer so it's a little bit thicker than this one but it's water-based so there's no smell and there's no uh, the thing of it is you when you go in here and y'all have dust everybody has it if you have brick walls uh, if you go in that interior wall and you put something on it that's a, like a lacquer or a urethane or a varnish 
you're going to trap moisture behind it, it's going to blow off and your dusting is going to increase because of the moisture you've trapped. So this product is breathable. So it's not going to trap moisture in your wall, but it's called masonry dust proofer. Because the dust is right and you're kind of adding the binder back into Well, it's a silicone, so right. it's not it's not a silicate. It's a silicone. So the silicone itself is kind of gluing things together. It leaves it a, basically a non-visible coating. It, it, you, or, it uh, does, leaves no sheen. There's, there's no, you wouldn't really would know it. Uh, but it does reduce it. I've tried it on my old buildings. It does reduce it by, on mine, about 80%. Well, we've used an earlier version uh, commonly, and I've had no no go back on dusting and uh, no uh, extensive odor or uh, visible. Uh, yeah, there's no odor. And the good thing about it, because this came up, the, li the life of the dust proofer is it's almost, there's nothing to break it down inside of a house. You, you don't have sun, you don't have, you don't have any elements. So it's going to last a very long time. If anybody wants a, a sample of the masonry dust proofer, uh, you can uh, email customer care at prosico.com or, or through the website and they will send samples to a distributor close to you. And that would probably be masonry products right over here on Bienville in the, in, in mid cities. You know if that's similar to a product called water glass? Are you familiar with that product? No, I've not seen that one. That's a lime work. I think it's a, a, a lithium silicate. Yeah, those silicate products are the same products they use for concrete densifying, and, and they're silicates in some of our products for external conservation. Uh, but those things have a terrible smell, and the smell lingers. And they're really not. Uh, they're really not holding sand together like this one. Is. I've used a water glass prior in my, in my own office as a test sample compared to what was previously the dust proofer. Uh, I think the dust proofer holds out better and yet doesn't leave the same uh, angular sheen that the lithium silicate did. Uh, I had like big hopes that from Limeworks being uh, the historical version that says they promoted that, that it would be what Prosico has developed. But I found that the Prosico product be superior for the applications that we contemplate right now. Not that the lime water, water glass isn't good in certain, but for our composition of mortars here, it seems that the Prosco products better harmoniously blend with those. I'm a shade tree chemist, but in order for those products, you need cement, you need alkalinity, and you know, on these old mortars, you don't really have anything but lime and sand, a lot of them. So. The silicone doesn't need to react with anything. It just goes in and dries. So you're welcome to try it, but that's what it was developed by our preservationists on staff. So, because uh, we don't want to trap moisture. Do we, Brooke? No, we do not. We all know that. We all know that. Don't trap Especially moisture. Especially if you attended the first workshop. That's right. Okay, if, if that's if that's it, guys, thanks a whole lot for having us, and we enjoy it. Call us if we can help.